God, I hope I don't mess this up. What's going on guys? What's cracking? Uh, working on the super here today. We have a tuning day coming up. So I am about to put new spark plugs in the car. Kind of go over a few things because this Thursday, which today is Monday, uh, is the tune day with John Kerr, or I also know as JK tuned out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Uh, he's tuned the car before and in this area, he's pretty well known as known in, and being known in general is a very good tuner. Um, he doesn't have a specific car type. He tunes just about everything. Like he had a couple like tractor pulled like tractors there he was tuning, which is kind of crazy. He does rotaries, you, you name it, he does it. He literally does it all. So it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. So I'm going back up for a retune. I'm sticking with the same injectors for right now. So it should make it a lot easier because most of it's out in on 93. We're gonna have to do a few little, you know, twitches there. But the real big thing is going to be E85. And because of that, we're gonna go to these new Iridium spark plugs. These are the BKR8. EIX uh, 2668. That's the exact part number. So again, that's BKR8 EIX 2668. Um, we're going to throw these in. I have no idea what that's gapped to right now. I have zero clue what that's gapped to, and it's driving me crazy as this thing's trying to hunt for focus because my camera sucks. Even though it's a brand new camera, most likely the user. But take these out. I want to see what they're gapped to and see if they're in bad shape or not. All right, guys, so we got all the plugs out here, number one through six here, and here's the new NGKs up above. Uh, I actually had the same exact plugs in before the, uh, the BKR8 EIX again. Uh, they're Iridium plugs. This here, just for these plugs, is like 50 bucks. It's ridiculous how expensive these spark plugs are, but that's what you need. Um, so what I'm gonna do is check the gap, which I already did. I uh, went ahead and used my fandy dandy tool here, which is pretty basic. Uh, ended up being 25 thou because I forgot what I had them gap to. So I'm gonna take the same plugs and do the same thing again. Uh, I think out of the box they're 32 thou, so you gotta take them and believe it or not, the best way to do it without having, the buck performance makes this cool little tool to do this properly, but you just take it and kind of beat it down some, usually on a piece of wood that's softer, you don't wanna do it on metal or anything like that because it can damage the if you drop it hit the porcelain area of the spark plug so just be careful but uh, i'm going to gap the plugs down and uh, put them back in the car all right guys so now i've got all the new spark plugs up here all gapped to 27 thou uh, i think i messed up there earlier when i was talking but these were gapped to 27 thou uh, before I think factory when I just checked them there was like 32 thou out of the box So we brought it down a little bit uh, Obviously when you have a turbo car you have a little bit more issues with blowing out the spark Supposedly these iridiums don't have that issue uh, nearly as much like with my old uh, Copper plugs I was running I was down to like 16 17 thou but the cold start sucked with these I don't have cold start issues none of that problem now uh, They cost a lot more obviously a box of the cheap copper ones is like 10 to 15 dollars versus 50 to 60 dollars for these but if you really think about it and the giant spectrum of everything going on when you're doing all this, this is kind of a drop in the bucket. So definitely worth it. So let's go ahead and drop these in, uh, put them back on, start the car up. And then next we've got to wire in the two-step or the anti-lag switch for rolling anti-lag, which I'm pretty excited about. Never had it. So let's go ahead and finish this up and then move on over to that. One other thing guys I wanted to mention, I'm not sure if you guys had issues with this or not before, uh, but all pretty much all of the bolt holes that hold down the coil packs for my head, I bought it this way, I'm not sure how it happened or what happened, except for these first two holes uh, are all pretty well stripped. I actually had to get these slightly longer bolts uh, because the threads do go down slightly further uh, to get as much grip as I could. The one is completely gone. I'm gonna have to drill, tap it, and put an insert in it. 
I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure what you guys have done. If you guys can give me some feedback here, I'd appreciate it. If you can tell, we're moving and I had some power tools, but when I put anything new back in these or any spark plugs, I always do everything by hand just, just to be safe. It's not worth taking the chance of damaging their head every more, even more. So just a little heads up and FYI. Well, before we do anything, let's uh, take this and uh, let's head down to the old Sheets. If you guys don't live in Pennsylvania or Maryland or anything like that, you guys won't know what Sheets is. Put that in the old front seat there. We're gonna head to Sheets and get me some E85. Um, it's literally a mile from my house, so it makes it really, really freaking nice. So you don't have to like, like go far. I can literally get race gas at my local gas station, which is pretty fucking awesome. Guys, this is a really rare occasion also. Um, look. She's actually riding it. This never happens. <laughs> this never, ever, ever happens. So. It's actually not that loud. So, all right, we're going to get ED5 right now. I had to put the baby in the back because my big baby's up front now. Yeah. All right, guys, gotta get my jug here. If I can get my big ass back here, sorry, honey. Sorry, me and the baby gotta get out real quick. Here's one thing I'm noticing though, guys. We have flex fuel here, right? But look at the percentage. It says 51 to 83%. Um, I'm not seeing anywhere here where it says straight E5. Now, again, I'm new to this. Um, I thought it would usually say like literally E5 on it. So if I am being stupid, let me know. But I've never seen it any other way. Um, but I am liking the price of it. Like 87 is 285, which is the cheapo. 245. Can't beat that. All right guys, so just filled up there. Thanks honey for being a great fuel holder because I didn't plan on her coming along. My car doesn't have seat belts in the back and... That's okay. It's safe right here. My wife, you're doing such a great... Whoa, what was that noise? What'd you do? What'd you do? All right, we're going back to the house now guys. Let's go ahead and put this two-step anti-lag switch, blah, blah, blah in. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get that done. All right, so we have a bit of an issue here. I pulled all the wiring and well, let me just show you here. So I pulled all the wiring out here. Um, I'm getting ready to wire up the car, right? So turn this on. Uh, I'm getting ready to go through this. Right there's the connector. I actually have to depin uh, two of them and run down over here from a momentary switch. I'm gonna be getting rid of that there too, which is my trim pot switch, which I'll talk back there in a second. But the switch and show. It's a momentary switch. Um, I got it from Amazon. I didn't realize I hit the wrong shipping. Instead of two-day shipping, I did the uh, ship whenever shipping because I'm an idiot. Yeah, so it's not gonna show up in time. Why I did that, how I did that, I have no idea, but I did. So now I'm kind of stuck, um, unfortunately, until it gets here. So, yeah. So, what we're gonna do now is put this all back together, uh, finish this up and get it ready for the tune still. I still have a few last things to do. Uh, one other thing I wanna talk about was the trim pot switch here. So right now I have this trim pot switch that's in the car, um, which is for my traction control. So you spin it. And it puts it to different levels of traction control, which is good. Works great, works flawlessly, actually. But I'm getting a new BTI gauge. Brandon from BTI is kind enough to send me the new one, the 3.5 inch touchscreen, which I'm gonna do a full video on and show you guys how that all works. Explain what the difference between this and the big screen ones are. Uh, he sells all, he's got three different types, plus he's got dash displays now, which is freaking awesome. Uh, I'll explain all that to you all then. Uh, but we're gonna be replacing this, and with the new touchscreen, it actually allows you to change boost levels inside of it, and it lets you change traction control. Uh, so no need for a second switch, which is, my opinion is a cleaner look, plus I'll be able to see better parameters on here, which again, I'll show you all that. Uh, so I'm gonna be removing this. I might just give this to somebody because I think these are only 20 bucks. It's already pre-wired up. I had to make my own wiring. Uh, as AEM doesn't really send you anything, you kind of just have to figure it out on your own. So I ran like my own little wiring kit down in there. But yeah, I'll be taking that out and uh, getting this thing all buttoned up. Another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is people were like, hey, Ryan, how do you plan on making that much power? Um, I'm going to be pushing the system a good bit, what I mean by system, the fuel system. I only has one Walboro pump in it right now, which is rated for 750 or so horsepower. 
um, and then a thousand cc injector. So I'm gonna have to bump up fuel pressure to compensate for the thousand cc's. I'm hoping to make just over uh, 700 or so. Most of the whole reason for the retune is the whole new setup over here, fix the 93 tune, and then just have it set up so I can finally run 85. Mostly for more aggressive timing down low, uh, I'm looking to get that that instant torque feeling that ED5 allows for. And with dual gates now, ED5, I have such good boost control that we can just let it rip and not have to worry about anything, you know. I went overboard with the waste gates and putting two 46 millimeters. Most people said to run like two 38s, but I'd rather put bigger waste gate on it. Uh, they're easy to control as it is. I'm gonna use one single Mac valve, which is a three port, not a four port per my tuner. Um, and I should be fine. I don't see any issues. Um, and I also, another thing people keep bugging me about is this. So everyone's like, Ryan, why are you running these janky ass rubber hoses? Um, I had actually had vibrant hose connectors, uh, which were, looked a lot better, but they kept melting. Uh, and I am thinking about going to like a AN style setup, but this works so well. It is so cheap. It is so effective. I don't see the reason to go elsewhere. The only thing I think we're going to do is order some, once we get tuned to make sure this all actually works, is replace all these brass fittings with black ones. Um, these were just ones I got off Amazon cheap shipped here. And I don't like using plastic connectors. Like most of the people for the tees, they use a plastic connector. Being on the hot side, I just don't trust them. I feel like they're gonna melt. So kind of go overboard and use these brass fittings instead. Um, that's just my personal opinion. And the reason I'm getting fuel ahead of time is, again, uh, I'm gonna run the car first on 93. Then when we get up there, after we get things tuned in a little bit, you know, make the fine refinements or whatever, we're gonna switch over to 85. So we're going to dump out all the fuel in the car. Uh, we're gonna just turn on the, put power to the fuel pump, push all the fuel out, dump over 85 into it. If it is 85, uh, it's most likely early time of year, it's most likely E70 in there. So what we did or what I had John do was order me a pail of E98. And this was his idea, I never even thought about this, on the fact that you buy, you know, you go down to the local store, for us here local, for a mile from my house, I can get E85 at the pump. Uh, go down there, put it in there, uh, drive it up, and whatever the content comes to, say like E72 or E68, whatever it comes to, just keep adding E98 till it gets to that E85 or E84 level, and then stop. And then you can just go from there and then you'll know once the summertime gets here if you do have a very good you know pump that you get to and it does read exactly 85 then you're already tuned and ready to go for it if i only go up and tune for e70 when it gets up to 85 it'll still run the same it'll still run great but it won't use the full potential of the fuel just because we never had it in the car when the car went to get tuned so i hope that makes sense um i know it's a blend table and all this other stuff i don't know enough about i went for tuning school 10 years ago I don't remember shit from it, to be honest. It's one of those things, if you don't use it, you lose it. Well, I guess we'll end this video on turning the lights off here, hitting this button there, open the garage door up, finishing off by taking the Supra for a quick ride. You guys should support your boy too. Got Pure Function key tags in the store down below. Function eats form on one side, Pure Function on the other. Uh, I've always thought these things were really cool, bright red, and I like, I just think they're real cool. And it's easy to find your key, and it's soft, so it doesn't damage your dash, which is a big thing for me, especially if you have your keyhole. And then your keys rub against your dash, and it drives you insane. Ooh. See how she does? Cold start. before I get demonetized again. But just cruising along here in the old borough. Uh, if you're from Waynesboro, you know where I am right now. Uh, about to pass Tom Shock is the old 84 Lumber. Only thing sucks about this car where I live is there's not a lot of places that you can uh, open her up in Mexico. So where I live is literally in the middle of nowhere and you're not gonna be going fast anywhere. Like for, unless it's like a short bit and then you gotta let off. There's nowhere to really like open it up that's smooth, flat, like, get to drive it, or I shouldn't say don't get to drive it, that's why I don't drive it that much, that's why I kind of drive the MR2 more, for the fact that I can get more use out of what that's designed for, you know, under 60 miles an hour, that car is great, above 60, it's a fucking turd, it's a turd, it's slow, but it's fun, so, and I just realized, I just turned over 500 miles, I've done 500 miles this week, or in the last seven days alone, so, I just got this car back up and running, Last Monday, whatever. Yeah, we went last Monday. Tonight's Tuesday, so I guess it's eight days. So sue me. But I did in eight days. I did that many miles. That is insane. 
I did drive it to work that one day, so that right there is 140 miles. So about 350 of them are just no, nonsense fun miles, and about 150 or so were work miles. That's right, that's how, I, how far I drive to work every day round trip. It sucks. And on that note, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Uh, the next one's going to be the big one video, guys. We're going to show, I'm going to show everything from the tuning. Uh, that happens this, 30, this Thursday here at John Kerr. I can't talk. At John Kerr's JK Tune. So uh, I plan on getting a ton of video from that. Kind of want to get John on film, if he'll allow it. Uh, to talk a little bit about the car, what he does exactly, and how long he's been in business. You guys, you know what to do. Check out the Facebook, Instagram, and the website. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later. Peace!